Okay, so now, things are looking very messy, okay, but what we can do is that we can anticipate further ahead to really match up the ones that, that we have that are equal, or shall I say that they are, are different by a, a negative sign, so that means that they will cancel out each other. Okay, knowing also, bear in mind that for dot product, we can shift the, the, the scalar functions to one side, okay. So, being the case, okay, and we are also going to assume at this point that the values of kappa and the values of torsion are equal for C1 and C2. Why? Because in proving the fundamental theorem, the two curves are congruent if kappa and torsion are equal. So, that would mean that when we started out with, let's just assume that kappa and torsion are equal and that they, they are a non-vanishing curve. Sorry, I forgot to include that vanishing curve term down, meaning to say that kappa does not equal to zero. Because if kappa equals to zero, the unit normal and the unit bar normal cease to exist and that's going to be a problem. We can't prove anything. So, basically kappa is not equal to zero, as in, in a way, it's continuous throughout the whole curve and that the curve is not vanishing, okay? So, now, with the values of kappa and torsion being equal, we can kind of cancel out things together, okay? So, I'm going to do it a step at a time. Let's see this one over here, okay? To neaten the algebra, okay? We got n1 dot with n2, knowing to say that, in a way, they're also commutate, commutative, okay? Now, what do we have? We got n1 over here, okay, and it's going to dot with the minus kappa t2, which is the same one over here, so we're going to cancel this out, okay? So, that would cancel this one. Because when we times this into this, they cancel out because of the minus sign here. Okay, I hope you caught that. Okay, now, T1 dot with kappa N2. Okay, T1, let's see where we have. T1 we have over here, and we've got an N2 over here. So, we can times the N2 inside, okay? And it's minus kappa, but remember, commutative, we can also bring the kappa over here. So, it's plus kappa T1 dot N2, minus kappa T1 dot N2, likewise, cancel again. Okay, things are going quite smoothly. Okay, the next one. Torsion times B1 dot with N2. Now, let's find an N2. Do we have an N2? We've got an N2 over here, and it's minus torsion, and it's dot by B1 again. So, meaning to say, we also can cancel this one out, and we'll cancel this one out here. Okay, looking good so far. We've got N1 dot with torsion, B1, N1 dot with torsion, B... Okay, wait, let's... Okay, it's a mistake. Yes, sorry, it's a 2 over here. Okay, I apologize again because algebra, this is a lot of equations. Okay, so we have B2 over here, right? That means because we are differentiating this, this one over here, okay? Which is N2, so it's T2, B2, correct? Okay, so N1 multiplied by torsion B2, we got a B2, we got N1, and we got a minus torsion, hence, cancel, and what do you know? The first derivative of the, this big function is equals to zero, okay. Now, what would that be? Okay, that would mean that uh, we start out at a certain arc length, okay, which will again correspond to a point on the curve. Am I not wrong? Okay, which will correspond to a point on the curve, okay. The value of this doesn't change because the change is zero, just as we have proven over here, okay. So, having that in mind, we will know that this function, this f fs function over here, which is equal to this, doesn't change as we move along the curve, okay? As we move along the curve over here. But we still need to really have a few new techniques to really see what does that mean, okay? And at this point, I would like you to maybe just take some time to think about it and catch you at part two. Okay, so hope you took some time to think about it and part two is this. Okay, so now, the first derivative, I'll just write it over here. The first derivative of this function is equal to zero, meaning to say that this function is going to stay constant throughout as s changes. Okay, so now this is how we're going to do it. Okay, we got two curves like that. Let me just draw it a bit bigger. Okay, to really comprehend what's going on. Okay, two and then we got an s. Okay, we got two curves. Okay, like this. Okay, now. The two curves, we're trying to prove that they are congruent, meaning to say that when we impose them to, together, they are the same, okay? But obviously, that's what we're trying to prove. So, for, for, uh, uh, in light of that, let's just draw two curves, okay? C1 and C2, okay, bearing in mind that kappa 
and torsion are equal, okay, and that they are continuous or kappa does not equal to zero. So we're going to try to prove that they are congruent. Now, I purposely draw them to show that they are not congruent because that's what we're trying to prove. So now, we started off with this equation over here. So what is the next step? Now, the next step is that we're going to pick a point. Okay, we're going to pick a point. Let's just say it's over here like that. Okay, and this point is when S is equal to zero. Let's just say the, the starting point of, of the curve. Okay, and C1 is over here, C2 is over here. It doesn't matter where the point is. Let's just say the point is at C2. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to kind of transpose or translate C1 so that it, it, in, in, it gets in line to, with that point where S is equal to zero. So if C1, when S is equal to zero, the point on C1 is say over here, the vector is over here, okay, the starting point, we'll just impose this over here so we will get something like that. Okay, that means C1 over here. C, yes, just put it as C1. Okay, so what we did again, I would say I'll trans translate C1 to that point so that C1 and C2 share a common point. Okay, because the theory says, the fundamental theory says that two curves are congruent, meaning to say that we can translate them to the same point. Okay, so now I'm just basically trans translating C1 onto C2 and intersect at a certain point. But I haven't shown that they are the same curve yet. I've just shown that they start at the same point. Why do I want to do that? Because now, I know that they are the same point, okay? So, the vectors, okay, from here to here, right? Oh, sorry, since they are at the same point, the, the unit vectors, the tangent, normal, and binomial, at this point over here, okay, they have to be the same. So, the function s equals to zero is equals to, for this whole thing, okay, which I will write out again, okay, S add up with n one s dot n two s add up with b one s dot b two s okay is gonna equal to th uh, three okay now I okay I hope that that makes sense okay I'm gonna say the reasoning again you see. The, the, there's a point on, on the curve C1 and there's a point on the curve C2. So I bring C1 onto C2 so that they share the common point. Now if they share the common point, it, it's to say that the point in space is the same. And if that's the case, in, then the, the unit tangent, the unit normal and the unit binomial needs to be the same vectors. Okay, that means they are equal. So, if, okay, let me, give me a second. Okay, now, now that they are equal, okay, these two are equal, these two are equal, and these two are equal. So what do you know when these two are equal? Well, it would just simply write T1S square add up with square add up with the binomial. Now that they are equal, square, 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 what do we know about unit? Then again, we get the magical number. 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared equals to 3. And likewise over here. Okay, so that's another step, okay. And we can also say that since the first derivative of this does not change, would it mean that as we move the point along the curve, okay, this function is still gonna remain at three, okay? I, I say it again. We know that the rate of change of this function is equal to zero. So we started at this point over here, okay, and then that would say that since this is, at this point here, this function is equal to three, the rate of change is zero, as the point moves along the curve, this function will still be equal to three over here, 